Ever wondered what really annoys flight attendants? Well, today we're lifting the veil on the sky-high etiquette that keeps our flights smooth and our cabin crew sane. Our sources? The flight attendants themselves, sharing the five things passengers should never do on a flight and why these behaviors drive the crew up the wall. First off, we have a no-brainer, yet surprisingly common faux pas, visiting the bathroom barefoot. Yes, you heard that right. Some passengers venture into the airplane bathroom sans footwear, oblivious to the hygienic nightmare they're stepping into. Next, we delve into the danger zone, ignoring the seatbelt sign to answer nature's call. It's not just about flouting the rules, but the potential for injury during unexpected turbulence. And then there's the call button conundrum. Believe it or not, it's not a personal butler service. Pressing the call button just to hand over your garbage can drive any flight attendant batty. Our fourth point touches on a contentious topic, in-flight intoxication. The party atmosphere might be tempting, but remember, getting drunk on a plane is a surefire way to irk your cabin crew. Finally, we tackle the alarming trend of onboard brawls. Even if you're pushed to the brink, picking a fight, especially with the cabin crew, is a big no-no. Stay tuned to find out what these surprising pet peeves are. First on our list, bathroom etiquette, or should we say, the lack thereof. Let's dive into the first two points, beginning with the unthinkable. Going to the bathroom barefoot. Yes, it's as horrifying as it sounds. The confined space of an airplane bathroom is not exactly the epitome of cleanliness. The aroma alone should be a dead giveaway. And let's not forget the turbulence. It's an unpredictable guest that can arrive unannounced, causing unfortunate accidents. So, where do you think the aftermath of these accidents ends up? That's right, on the floor. So when you decide to take a barefoot trip to the restroom, you're practically having a close encounter with the remnants of turbulence-induced accidents. Now moving on to the second point. Picture this. You're on a plane. The seatbelt sign is on, but nature calls. What do you do? Despite the urge, you must resist. That seatbelt sign is not a decoration. It's a vital safety measure in place to protect you from unexpected turbulence, ensuring you don't end up with a surprise bump on your head from the overhead bins. So when the seatbelt sign is on, it's best to keep your seat and hold on. But what if you really, really need to go? Well, consider this. Your momentary discomfort is a small price to pay for your safety and the safety of others. After all, a bathroom visit during turbulence can not only be a messy affair, but also a dangerous one. So the next time you're flying, remember to keep safety first and bladder second. In conclusion, airplane bathrooms are no place for a barefoot adventure, and the seatbelt sign is not just a pretty light. It's there to ensure your safety. So respect the rules and stay safe. Remember, turbulence doesn't choose a moment, and neither should you when it comes to safety. Next up, the call button. A helpful tool or a source of annoyance? Ever notice that little button above your seat that looks like a bell? That's the call button, and it's there for a reason. It's designed to get the attention of the flight crew when you need something, like a glass of water or assistance with your seat. But here's where the conundrum comes in. Some passengers have a knack for hitting that call button just to give the flight attendant their garbage. Yes, that leftover sandwich wrapper or empty soda can. Now this might seem like a harmless act, but it's actually a major pet peeve for the flight crew. Why you ask? Well, it's simple. Flight attendants have a schedule to stick to. They have scheduled times to walk through the cabin with garbage bags collecting all the waste. When you press that call button for them to collect your trash, you're throwing off their routine. They might be in the middle of another task and your impromptu garbage disposal request can cause unnecessary disruptions. The bottom line is, the call button is not your personal garbage disposal service. It's a tool to request assistance in case of a need. So let's all do our part to keep things running smoothly in the air. So next time, hold on to that napkin a little longer, won't you? Ever thought of getting a little tipsy on your flight? Think again. In the cozy confines of an airplane cabin, it may seem tempting to indulge in a few drinks to ease the tension of travel or simply to pass the time. However, in-flight intoxication is not just a nuisance for the crew and fellow passengers, but it can also lead to serious legal consequences. Air travel and alcohol can be a volatile mix. 
At cruising altitude, the lowered oxygen level in your blood can make the effects of alcohol more potent. That's right. The same amount of alcohol you'd normally handle on the ground can hit you harder and faster in the air. This not only increases the risk of disruptive behavior, but also intensifies the impact of a hangover once you land. Moreover, flight attendants are trained to spot signs of intoxication, and they have the authority to refuse service to anyone who appears overly intoxicated. And contrary to what some may believe, flight attendants aren't there to be your personal bartenders. They are on board primarily for your safety, and dealing with tipsy passengers can distract them from their essential duties. The potential fallout of in-flight intoxication doesn't stop there. For starters, you could be hit with hefty fines. In some countries, the fine for drunken behavior can reach into the thousands. And if your antics cause a flight diversion, you'll be on the hook for the costs, which can run into tens of thousands of dollars. Furthermore, if your behavior is deemed unruly or threatening, you could face criminal charges. You may be arrested upon landing, or even worse, the plane could be diverted to the nearest airport where you'll be handed over to local authorities. Even more sobering is the fact that airlines have been known to ban passengers for life due to drunken incidents. So, the next time you're soaring through the skies, remember that moderation is key when it comes to alcohol. It's not just about avoiding a hangover, it's about avoiding a legal headache, ensuring the safety of everyone on board, and keeping the skies friendly. Remember, a sober flight is a safe and peaceful flight. Lastly, let's talk about in-flight fights. Not a good idea, folks. We're not just talking about heated arguments, but also physical altercations. You might think it's a no-brainer, but the number of onboard brawls that make headlines is surprisingly high. And the target of these scuffles? More often than not, it's the cabin crew. Your flight attendant is not your enemy. They're there to ensure your comfort and safety during the flight. Picking a fight with them, or any other passenger for that matter, is not only rude, but also dangerous. Remember, you're in a confined space, 35,000 feet in the sky. The last thing you want is to create a hostile environment. Now let's talk about consequences. It's not just about a few disapproving looks from your fellow passengers. Engaging in disruptive behavior can land you in legal hot water. Airlines have strict policies against unruly behavior and they're not afraid to enforce them. If you're causing a ruckus mid-flight, the captain has the authority to divert the plane and have you removed. Yes, you heard that right. Your actions could lead to an unscheduled landing, inconveniencing hundreds of people. Not to mention, you'll be met by law enforcement upon landing. That's a hefty price to pay for losing your cool. But that's not all. You could potentially be blacklisted by the airline, effectively ending your flying days. Imagine being barred from boarding a flight, not because of a pandemic, but due to your own poor behavior. It's a serious matter with serious repercussions. In a nutshell, keep your disagreements civil and your hands to yourself. If you're feeling irate, take a deep breath, count to 10, or listen to some calming music. Remember, a peaceful flight is a pleasant flight. So, Keep your cool and enjoy your flight. After all, it's about the journey, not just the destination. Travel can be stressful, but does it excuse bad behavior? Let's revisit the points we've covered today. Walking barefoot to the airplane bathroom? A big no-no. Ignoring the seatbelt sign and venturing off to the toilet? Also not recommended. Pressing the call button just to hand over your trash? That's a surefire way to annoy your flight attendants. And let's not forget about drinking excessively or picking fights on board. Both are not only disrespectful, but can also lead to serious legal repercussions. In the hustle and bustle of travel, it's easy to forget that we're part of a shared space where our actions can affect others. By maintaining a level of decorum, we can ensure a more pleasant flying experience for everyone on board. So next time you fly, remember these tips. Safe travels, everyone.